Hey everyone, it's Taylor here, the Serial Hobbyist. Thank you for joining in on this video. I know I haven't posted in a very long time, and this year has been crazy for all of us, but I am so excited to share my newest hobby of upcycling and refurbishing furniture on a budget. And so stay tuned and I will show you exactly how I got this look and how we transformed a 20 to 30 dollar walmart square organizer into this beautiful coastal cabinet so we started with this two by two square cube organizer from walmart i believe we got it about one or two years ago and it hasn't really been used. It's kind of been sitting on our patio for about as long as we've had it. And so it was unused, just very, very dirty. Um, it had lots of dust and grime on it. It was also slightly waterlogged on the bottom, but for the purpose that we were using it for, which is basically to hold our dog's sprays and potty pads, it seemed like it was still okay and we didn't have to go out and get a new one. We bought these two inch by one inch pieces of wood from Lowe's for about 10 bucks and basically we just trim them to the size that we needed um, what's not pictured here is Michael actually going in again and making sure that every single piece has the correct 45 degree angle on each end so we could fit it together like a door and while Michael worked on sawing all of the wood pieces to fit perfectly into a door shape, I went ahead and I sanded the entire cube organizer wherever I was planning on painting. And I know that the organizer is already white, but we just wanted to make sure um, that we could not only cover up the waterlog areas, but also just make sure that the colors are matching on both the cube organizer and the doors so it looks very cohesive. Once we got all of the wooden pieces to the right angle and length, we then connected them to make a door shape using these flat braces we also got from Lowe's. So we first drilled a hole and then screwed in um, the screws on all four corners of the two doors. The one issue or challenge that we ran into with this was keeping the corners of the wood pieces together while drilling and screwing it in so that the two corners don't separate to form a hole. And so you can kind of see a little bit better here that it definitely was a two-man job and I worked to kind of hold the two pieces together while Michael did all of the drilling and screwing and we did the best that we could, but you'll see in the next clip that there are still gaps between all of the wood pieces and we had to do some caulking. As I mentioned before, it was really hard not to get any gaps between all of the wood pieces and so we went in and we filled in the holes with caulking and that seemed to do the job. I also planned on painting everything including the doors so I knew it was going to look a little bit better once I got the paint on there. I then went ahead and I just primed and painted all of the different areas that were going to be seen from the outside. I also decided to paint the bottom side of the cubes on the inside just because we would be putting things on it and as you're looking from an upwards angle you can see that area so I went ahead and primed and painted that as well. I ended up doing one coat of primer because everything was already white and I did one or two coats of white paint. 
Then it was time to screw in the cabinet door handles. Sorry, I did not get a very good video of this. This is like super low quality and zoomed in, um, but you can see what I did here. I measured out exactly where the holes needed to be on both doors. Um, I actually ended up making a mistake and having to go back and make the hole a little bit bigger to make sure that they were both lined up perfectly. And then this was probably my favorite part of the whole project, stapling on the burlap to the back of the cabinet doors. I took this burlap that I got from a fabric store for a couple bucks and I just pulled it really taut and I used my staple gun and stapled it all around the back of the cabinet door. We added some door hinges, making sure that the hinges on both cabinet doors were as even as possible. This probably was the trickiest step for us in this project because we measured and made the cabinet doors the exact same size and length as the square organizer, which in theory sounds correct. And yet, usually when there are two cabinet doors that are opening outward, we didn't realize this until later, but there's usually a small, tiny gap between the two doors so that when you're opening them together, they don't hit each other. And so needless to say, it took us a couple of tries, but eventually we figured it out and the doors were perfectly distanced with just a slight gap and were able to open together without hitting one another. added on magnets to the doors and Michael cut out legs for the cabinet. Because we were making our own legs and not buying pre-drilled legs from the hardware store, we had to kind of be creative with this and so we took a screw and went from the top and screwed it into the leg that was underneath the cabinet. It was ready to be taken into our living room. As you can see, we didn't have a back on the cabinet just because it was gonna be a decorative cabinet, but we plan on adding something to the back in the future. Here it is in our living room. I think it really ties all of our decorations together and honestly, I just love looking at it every single day. It's perfect for what we were looking for and it doesn't look too different from the $1,500 cabinets that I see online. And so I'm just really happy with the way that it turned out. I hope that this inspired you to go and do some of your own DIY projects, maybe upcycling something that you already have Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next one.